session we have um, four very distinguished speakers. One of them is Prof uh, Dr. Vijay Gupta, who spoke uh, at length about his experience on fish. So, and then followed by Dr. T.J. Higgins from uh, Higgins from CSIRO. Then we have uh, Professor Chai Jenming from China, who spoke about peri-urban agriculture. And we had uh, Dr. Harvey Pitt from Monsanto talking about uh, GM crop. So, I want because of the odd one out and the importance of uh, fish, I want to start off with what uh, Professor V.J. Gupta's presentation. Um, again, in the whole discussion in food security, is usually dominated by crops and livestock, and often fish um, has been neglected uh, in the whole food security conversation. Having said that, fish is usually considered as rich food for, for poor people, and has been playing a very, very important role. And with this statistic that it shows that globally there are 540 million farmers of, of fish who uh, deals with aquaculture, which is about 8% of the population and contributes to $102 billion in foreign trade. So, with that, it is a very significant industry. I mean, majority of them are equally small farmers that uh, grow in, the, in their ponds, have water uh, during the, uh, what they call, rainy season and harvest them uh, as part of their normal agricultural practice. So nearly 50% of the food fish production is contributed by aquaculture and is expected to further increase in the coming years. 80% of this production comes from 20 million smallholders globally and of this, 80 million farmers are in Asia contributing 91% of global agriculture production, aquaculture production. Therefore, tells you how important this 20, 80 million small farmers are in Asia. And throughout his presentation, um, he has highlighted various uh, market uh, potential for aquaculture and also the need to increase the genetic potential of uh, the, the aquaculture fish fisheries. A lot of funding has gone into the crop, major crops like corn and, and, uh, and rice and etc. But significantly, I believe there's only 2 to 3% in terms of genetic increase has been put into uh, fishery as opposed to other genetic improvement that we see in uh, crops. So, therefore, it needs to strengthen research and development, improving fish stocks, including fish health management, integrate small aquaculture into globalized market economy, improving market access. This is also we hear from the other food uh, sector, whereby getting the, the fishes and the producers to market at a timely manner. Need policy reform, appropriate institutional and regulatory framework and integration into development planning. Again, in the whole discussion, usually crop and feed, uh, livestock comes into play, but not integrating the whole livestock discussion. So that is therefore needs to be in a whole uh, three sector discussion. Ensure small farmers adhere to food safety and product quality. And lastly, is improvement in quality and governance. So these are the three, sorry, the five key points that came up from Professor Gupta's uh, discussion on the need to improve the fish sustainability uh, program. And let me move on to the agriculture sector. So this we had presentation. I summarized Dr. Higgins and uh, um, Dr. Dick's uh, presentation into the GM technology part. Crop yield increase are falling below projected demand. Yield per unit of land must increase and or under cultivation must expand. Food and ecology security are intimately linked together and we have to deal with both as we move together. So the question is, can high productivity be sustainable? We have we heard this, this answer a uh, few times over the conference last two days. Least land for most food, least resources per unit food. New egg technology like GM can contribute to productivity increase, improve nutrition, resource use efficiently, and we don't yet know, but there is definitely a positive correlation with uh, food security in the long term because it increases yield, it can increase income, and reduce input to protect water, soil, and uh, biodiversity. But 
with this new technology available, it needs a paradigm shift in the new regulatory regime. Today, in, in Asia, we only have one very, very good, uh, what you call functional regulatory system, that is an example with the Philippines, whereby cultivation is uh, really and continuously upgraded in terms of regulatory regime. So political and social changes need to be to occur in terms of acceptance also. Having said that, much greater investment in R and D in moving towards market persistent breeding and uh, improving agro agro agronomic technology needs to be um, further what you call invested by various countries across the region. We have seen public funding of ag R and D coming down from in the seventies in the fifty percent. Uh, in, since the 70s, ag, uh, agriculture has reduced tremendously. And 50% of ag R&D originally from private sector, so R&D from private sector plays a significant part and continues to be dri driving the improvement in genetic yield. Uh, what we're trying to say is that the public and private sector partnership needs to be further enhanced um, to improve the uh, local genetics, bringing local germ plasm, protecting biodiversity and etc. Move it up to a what you call a localized crop to a more uh, higher genetic yield potential yield yielding crop so that they commercialize it and bring benefit to the local community, which is part of the farming first uh, agenda that we are just uh, promoting. Then coming back to as I said, science-based regulation. Um, farmers want needs to access to high uh, new technology. And therefore, farmers can't even access high yielding seeds and therefore not be able to achieve it, it's, um, the um, yield and quality that they want. IP protection and enforcement. Investment and innovation require IP protection. And therefore, the overall uh, IP and protection enforcement regime needs to be further enhanced. Rural infrastructure, again, this is similar to the fish and the other market access and outreach needed to ensure farmers get the input at the correct timing and also the other produce get to the market at the proper timing. Um, also, GM has a lot of tremendous debate over the past few years and we not need to have a basis on science-led public discussion, not to have emotional discussion. How do we create a rational discussion on the technology together with the stakeholders from scientists to the farmers, to the consumer, how do you create that? Uh, the need to, to, to develop a science-based discussion is, is critical for the technology to move forward. Then again, we see ASEAN uh, with 10 countries, then if you look at totally, total with other, other big countries like China, India, the regulation level is very, very different. In order for us to, to move across, we also need to harmonize regulation across countries and regulations need to be proportionate to the risk associated with this crop. Today, GM technology is, is um, being scrutinized at a very, very critical level, and therefore it should be, be uh, moved back to the appropriate level of risk. So that is something that uh, was uh, discussed during the uh, plant session. And lastly, it is uh, Professor Chai um, spoke at length on urban and peri-urban agriculture. There is strong evidence of a vital contribution of uh, urban peri urban in role in property reduction. I think uh, Prop Tech spoke about the mega cities coming online and there will be more slums being developed or uh, formed in, in a very, very near future. Therefore, having a uh, the model that is proposed by Professor Chai actually shown that they have reduced poverty reduction, ensuring food security within the immediate mega city environment and also be able to do environment enhancement because of the green belt and etc. Um, so in, a, in showing an example whereby Beijing get 40% of vegetable uh, supply by this um, urban peri-urban agriculture system and in Shanghai they have demonstrated more than 60% of the area uh, have self-sufficiency in terms of vegetable supply. So China has its uniqueness in farming system, but UPA, uh, which is the urban peri urban agriculture, may be relevant to many developing countries, especially other ASEAN countries. But it requires concentrated effort with strong government support um, to realize the full potential. There is need to attract the next generation of uh, younger people to, to, to into the agriculture. 
that is that there is a need to improve way of agriculture is taught to the younger generation, the new agriculture. And if also if you in agriculture per se, you need to look at the other sectors like economy, the economic environment, land use efficiency and energy use together in the whole um, course of when we teach the agriculture. It's not purely teaching how to grow a crop, but taking taking the overall uh, macro view of how agriculture contributes to society. So I think the, the two questions that is posed to the panel also, how can net food in point time please contribute to stabilization of food? availability, access, and utilization for other and globally. So there are a few recommendations. Of course, um, one is rich countries need to acknowledge that they need to pay, they are, sorry, they are paying too little for the food. So volunteer to pay more for the food. But coming down to a more uh, concrete suggestion would be countries like Singapore need to support R&D in other food production countries. They need to be part of the solution. They can't just reap the benefit of other countries and therefore needs to invest in agriculture productivity in other in the regional countries. For UPA, Singapore can be an experimental hub for all this innovation and technology. And um, therefore, I think Singapore has already started to embark on a vertical agriculture system. So it may be the next um, challenge to how Singapore government will take this on as a national agenda to promote uh, urban peri urban agriculture. So this is this is the brief summary of what came up from the session to all back to you. Thank you very much, Jamie. This was very comprehensive report in detail. And again I would urge the audience as you listen to the moderators, 